Hello and welcome to this lecture in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. In this video we're going to talk about bare metal servers. Now this is an offering that's been around in IBM Cloud for many years and it's one of the many differentiators. While some of the clouds now have this in some of the form or other, IBM's is the most advanced and feature rich. So in this video we're going to give you a bit of an overview, so I'm going to explain a bit further uh, what bare metal servers actually are, give you a bit of a comparison between them and a standard virtual machine, Describe some of the use cases for bare metal servers, so when you might choose to use them over a virtual machine, and also look at provisioning. So when you hear the term bare metal server, it perhaps conjures up images of physical servers in your mind, and that's pretty much what a bare metal server is. It's a physical server that is dedicated to a single customer, and it's theirs to manage from the metal up. So what does that mean? Well, simply, when you provision a bare metal server, IBM Cloud will take a physical server and effectively plug it into the cloud infrastructure for you. IBM then supports and manages that physical server up to the operating system. So that means if any of the underlying hardware fails, IBM monitors and fixes that and they will help with the hard reboot, i.e. physically turning the machine on and off. But overall, administration and management of the server lies with the customer that provisioned it. The bare metal server comes with a choice of operating systems which can be pre-installed, but if you prefer, it can come with no operating system installed at all which then gives you the freedom to install your own operating system to your own configuration. Or of course you can put a hypervisor on there if you wish and you can then create self-managed virtual machines on it. When ordering you can choose from lots of popular CPU, memory and disk configurations which match up to typical use cases or you can customise and have your own build to suit your own needs. Another option for bare metal is to provision with IBM Power 8 processors which can then run Power Linux and again this is optimised for processor intensive workloads. And if you have a need to run SAP workloads and want to move to the cloud, bare metal servers are SAP certified to run SAP HANA workloads. Of course, IBM Cloud also offers virtual machines, so what are the main differences between a bare metal server and a virtual machine? First, there's no sharing of underlying server hardware with other customers. As I mentioned, bare metal servers are dedicated to a single customer, and they're completely private to that customer. With a virtual machine, by definition, every operating system instance is sharing hardware with another, which can limit the throughput you can achieve and this can be a problem for some workloads. With bare metal, the customer manages the entire server, so this allows them to install their own flows of operating systems or to install certain hypervisors which are not otherwise available. It also allows them to set up internal disks how they want them with particular types of RAID arrays for example. Now if you don't know what a RAID array is, well it stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks and at a very high level it's a means of writing data to disk which makes the data resilient to a single disk failure. So in terms of setting up the server, there is far more flexibility than you get with a virtual machine and you can have the server exactly how you want it. Now bear in mind that because bare metal servers are physical objects, provisioning them takes a bit longer than a standard virtual machine. For pre-configured build it's around 20 to 40 minutes, while if you want a custom build, i.e. your own configuration of CPU, RAM and disks, this can take around 3 hours. But if you think about it, that's still pretty quick you're collecting your own physical server which takes weeks to achieve in a non-cloud world. Now, as I've already mentioned, you can also provision bare metal servers with IBM Power 8 processors, which are more powerful than Intel-based processors. As a rule of thumb, there is a 2 to 1 ratio, where to provide the same processing power as 8 Intel cores, you only need 4 power cores. So this means that for the same socket footprint, you can have roughly double the processing power from a Power 8, or you can add half your core count, which can have a major impact on software licensing costs. OK, so now let's look at some of the example use cases for bare metal servers. Well, the first is around software licensing. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in the position of looking at how software is licensed, but it can be a real nightmare. A common model for licensing is by the number of processor cores that the software is running on, but you do need to be careful with some software vendors when it comes to virtual machines and how they view licensing in such environments. For example, there's one major database vendor out there where you have to be very careful around virtual machines and their licensing around virtual machines pretty much boils down to unless you're using their hypervisor, you must license every CPU core in the server regardless of the number of virtual CPUs provisioned in the virtual machine running the software. Now you can see that if you have a virtual machine with say 4 vCPUs running on a host with say 32 physical cores, that's expensive. And of course, you can't actually see what the underlying physical machine looks like, so have no chance of getting the licensing correct. So a way around this is to have a bare metal server. Here you can either order a server with the CPU core count that you need and install the software straight onto an operating system, 
or you can install the software vendor's own hypervisor software onto the server and create a virtual machine which you can then properly license. So that's example one. Example two is around running compute intensive workloads. So because a single customer has sole use of the server, it's ideal for running applications which require high throughput or processing power because it doesn't need to be shared with anybody else. As mentioned, you can install Power8 processors which give about double the compute power to Intel processors. And with bare metal servers, you can also add GPUs which are designed for accelerating scientific computation, data analytics, and rendering professional grade virtualized graphics. So the types of graphics that you see in say Pixar movies, which take massive amounts of processing power to create. The third and possibly most common use case is where applications need to run on hardware, which is under the customer's complete control. And this will often be for security reasons. So perhaps you have a database uh, which you would like to run in the cloud, but it needs to be on a host that is not shared with any other customers. Another example is where you may need to install an operating system that is specifically tailored to security requirements, which may be difficult to achieve with a virtual machine. You may also find that you need to keep data on local disks as opposed to onto a shared SAM. So those are three fairly common use cases for bare metal servers, but generally, if you find that you cannot run an application in a virtual machine for some reason, then a bare metal server may be a good alternative. So let's move on to provisioning, and I'll record a quick lab on this too. Like everything else, you provision bare metal servers from the catalogue and you'll find them under compute or you can of course just search in the search bar. You can provision them so that they are hourly or monthly. So that means you either pay by the hour or pay by the month. So if you don't need to have the server for too long, paying by the hour will be more cost effective. But if you need to have your bare metal server longer term, then paying by the month will work out cheaper. Once you've provisioned the server, you can't actually switch between hourly and monthly billing, so it's worth doing the maths. I've just looked at the cost of a basic bare metal server and comparing hourly to monthly, monthly pricing starts to look more attractive after around 25 days of billing. But as I say, you should work that out for yourself based on the pricing you see. You then choose the physical location for your server and then choose your server configuration. Now again, you can choose between a number of popular configurations and these typically take 30 to 40 minutes to provision, or you can customize the builds, but these will take three to four hours to provision but this is still much, much faster than ordering and building a server the non-cloud way. You then choose your operating system or no operating system at all if you want to install your own later on. So the ones you can choose from are CentOS, FreeBSD, Windows Server, Red Hat and Ubuntu. And in the next video, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the provisioning screen. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about IBM Cloud bare metal servers. Thanks for watching.